Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, traders. Steve here in Logic FX Trading, and welcome to my latest news and reviews video on Friday, the 8th of March 2019. Guys, today we're looking at the ECB, their interest rate decision, their policy decisions that they made yesterday, and uh, the market's reaction to it. Let's just start with uh, having a look at this uh, particular article about it. Um, we'll just read a little bit of this. Uh, Mario Draghi has been grumbling about the deleterious damaging. So I don't know why people have to use big words. If they look them up in the dictionary, I think. Side effects of trade tensions and other geopolitical worries for months. Worries for months. But the ECB's surprise policy moves in the face of slowing global economy appear to bring the danger home to investors, guys. Okay, we'll talk through what um, they did and um, why they did it. But this is just to show you, you can go to my Flipboard and you will find that right in there. And just a quick thing, guys, I've put a new heading up. Uh, Warren Buffett, the uh, most successful uh, trader in the history of trading. The best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. The more you learn, the more you'll earn, guys. Anyway, that's Flipboard. You'll find the whole article over there. Have a read of it. Okay, so what's the lowdown? Let's go over to the charts. We'll actually go to the Euro chart. All right. Now, we've taken the Euro chart rather than DXY because the DXY is made up of more than just the Euro guys. So we're looking at this Euro chart. What happened yesterday was we, we have been going sideways for quite a while. That was the previous low from uh, a way back in 2016, 2017. We were there. We'd come up, we'd come back down. And when we got to this point, um, end of last year, November last year, people said, okay, that's the low. And from there, we're going to get a recovery. I wasn't so sure about that, basically because I had a, a higher uh, target for um, for DXY. And if you go over and you look at my Euro USD chart, you'll see a target down there, guys. Now, in the daily um, trading uh, recording that I do each day for my traders, we've often talked about this target and whether it was um, going to happen or not. And why we were kind of going sideways here, a lot of doubt was coming in. Everyone called that the, the bottom. If we go back to DXY, they called that the top. And basically said, hey, that's the top. Um, the dollar's going to drop from here. And we have been expecting a drop. In fact, if we go back to the daily, and you look at this whole move over the last lot of years, from around here, I call this to drop, to come back up, and then to drop again. So I am expecting a drop, guys. But whether the upside is finished or not, that's what we're not sure. My target from round about here, from this pullback, when was that? September last year, my target was here. Why was it there? Because I was just doing the old ABC thing, guys, equality. Usually, if you have a zigzag like this, that leg is often the same length as that leg. So I kind of said, well, listen, there's a fair chance that it will get up into this region. Over and above that, there's the fundamentals. Why would anybody bet against the dollar at this stage? The UK or the US economy is doing really well. Their interest rate for a developed um, economy is really good. It's better than Europe. It's better than the... In Japan, why would you, Japan's minus, Europe's 1.75. So why would you bet against the dollar? I don't know why you would bet against it. But for, so for me, when this started to drop and everyone was saying that's the start of the, I was saying, guys, I don't know. I'm not sure. And one day I was saying, hey, it is, it's going to go long. Everyone else is right and I'm wrong. The next day I was saying, no, I'm going neutral on this. The next day I was saying, guys, I think it's long. I still think it's long. So the point of it is, is that eventually after that, it is, it isn't. I settled for 
we're in a channel and eventually it'll drop out of the channel. Could be June, July, whatever, before the dollar starts to drop back down again, guys. But in the meantime, I suspect that that target may be a little bit lower, but up into that zone is still a possibility. Okay, it's still a possibility. Right, where does that come from? Well, when we've been in this, the one thing, as I just said, that's been sticking in my mind is, why would, why would it drop? There has to be a reason for it to drop. And it, this is made up of a combination, this is an index, dollar currency index, and it's made up of a combination of what was the US's major trading partners back in the 70s, I think this has been running from. But they, 60, 57% of this is made up by the euro. And then you have about approximately 10% is the pound. Something along those lines is maybe 13% is the yen. And it's the combination of the strength of all of those that determines what this looks like. Given what just happened yesterday to the euro, This has pushed up, it's spiked up quite significantly, guys. What we need to know now is whether the fact that it came back to that level means that it's going to drop again, or does it mean that it's going to give us a pullback and then it's going to break out of it? I suspect that's what's going to happen. We've got to let this develop before we can see if that's what's going to happen. Certainly it could run sideways for a while, buy a bit of time, and then something will happen which will break it out the top. We don't know that yet, guys, but I'm just laying down my marker to say that that is a possibility. Okay, why would this suddenly come back down again, given what's just happened? You've got to understand the reasons why things happen, guys. Don't just look at a chart and think, oh, well, there you go. It's gone up to the top, therefore it's coming back down to the bottom. That isn't necessarily true, guys. That isn't necessarily true. It could go sideways within this, but I suspect it'll pull back after that move up. It'll correct that whole move, and then we'll see a further push off. Let's see what happens, but that's possibly what's going to happen here. Getting back to the reasons that it happened. Right, let's pull this down a wee bit. The European, listen, the whole world economy is slowing down, guys. We're at that stage where some people are saying it's going to be a recession, other people are saying, no, it's just going to be a slowdown. What Europe were concerned about was that they see the, Euro, the European economy is basically stagnating. It's going sideways, it's going nowhere, guys. So essentially, monetary policy that the uh, reserve banks have is there. The options they have in their monetary policy is they can either increase or decrease interest rates, or they can um, basically print money. Okay, print money. Quantitative easing is what they call it in the UK and the US. Um, in, and in, in the... Um, in Europe, what they, they have a term called um, LTRO, which came out in the economic crisis back in 2008, 2009, around about then, whenever they were expecting the whole world economy to, to collapse, they had to bring some liquidity into it. Banks had to have someone that they could fall back on in order for them to loan. So the EU stood up and they said, OK, we'll introduce this thing. And it's called long-term um, refinancing operation. Yeah, sorry, guys, I, I couldn't remember it off the top of my head there. Uh, long-term refinancing operation, okay. But that was supposed to be something, and they would loan the money for three months or a couple of months or short-term loans to give banks the confidence that if they had any issues, any liquidity issues that could go to the European Central Bank and get one of these. Governments, also they were financing governments at 0%, okay. 
uh, with these, there was a percentage. Uh, let, let's not get in, into too fine a detail with these, it doesn't matter. What they now have is this TLRO, TLRO, which is basically that with targeted on it, okay? Same thing, guys, it's quantitative easing for another name, right? So why did the euro suddenly take off yesterday, or suddenly take off down in the downward position yesterday? The reason that it happened was because the market was surprised by what happened. When the market gets a surprise, that's when you get a sudden move. When, when something, when the market has, um, when they don't get surprised, then no matter what they do, talking about central bankers, guys, um, no matter what they do, if the market's already worked out what they're going to say or what they're going to do, generally speaking, the market doesn't react. That's why sometimes you can get an interest rate hike and nothing happens. And a very good example of that was way back over here. This, this, see that little spike and then a drop which day was that? Let's just say uh, 13th of June last year. The Fed increased interest rates by 0.25%. And we expected the dollar to do that on the basis of that. And what actually happened was it started to move up and then it crashed back down again and blew everybody's trades out of the water. So that was an increase of 0.25%. The next day, ECB had an interest rate announcement. And they came out and said, we're doing nothing. We're not increasing interest rates. And the euro dropped like a stone, which pushed this up. Why did that happen? Because they were expecting an interest rate hike, and it didn't happen. They were expecting to be a little bit more hawkish, and they were super dovish, and that resulted in DXY flying up. You can go and look for the equivalent in EXY, which is the, um, the European index. And what date were we there? Sorry, let me just get my dates, guys. I remember this right, because I remember losing money on it. Uh, sorry, 14th, 15th of June, 2018. It was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. 14th, 15th of June, 2018, that's August, August, June, 13th of June. Not as dramatic on this one, but you can see prices were coming down. We had broken out of trend, but a push up. We were in this structure, which often Elliott waivers will say, hey guys, that's a little correction of that move up. There's an interest rate decision coming out. There's what the market was expecting, guys. And there's what they got. Huge surprise because ECB, Draghi, gave them a surprise. When you get a surprise, you'll get a big move. Okay. Huge drop out the bottom there. Right. Let's get back to it. So, why was it a surprise? Well, basically what he said was, and I know this is a long drawn out thing, guys, but there's a lot to understand, especially if this is new for you. The reason that it was a surprise was he kept interest rates as expected, 1.75, didn't increase interest rates, but he did something. He said that in the previous um, interest rate decision day in the statement, he said that we wouldn't be looking to increase interest rates until after the summer 2019, going into the fall or into the autumn, as we call it in the UK. Um, so people were saying, going into autumn, we should see an interest rate hike. So, so the euro was kind of going like that, waiting for that interest rate hike. What happened was he said, oh, we're not going to do it then. We're going to push it back to 2020. Okay. So he's going to push it back to 2020. Over and above that, not only is he pushing that out to 2020, but they also reintroduced a round of these TLR. Is that correct? Low rate. 
And for goodness sake, guys. All right, TLTRO. Targeted long term refinancing operations, guys. Okay, quantum easing. So he's introduced more of this. In other words, they're printing more money. That's the, the, the equivalent is printing more money, diluting the euro. So they're going to dilute the euro. They're going to loan money out. They're going to create liquidity. They're going to push any interest rate hike out to 2020. All of that says that he's frightened that the European economy is going to slow down as a... Um, as a byproduct, or what will make it worse is obviously because they're looking at a world slowdown. His opinion of that, his the fact that he did those things means that he thinks the world economy is going to slow, the European economy is going to slow. That's why the surprise happened, guys. That's why you got the big move. Okay, I hope that helps. I hope I've explained that properly. I know some of you understand this stuff, and if you understand it, then. You've probably switched off a long time ago. If it's new for you, then I hope you've learned something. And uh, I'll see you again. Listen, I'm going to do another one of these over the weekend about Brexit. And listen out for it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel or get yourself over to um, Logic FX Trading on Sunday evening. That will be the latest point at which we'll do it. I don't know whether I'll do it today tomorrow or um, Sunday, but I'll have that done. The reason why is because on Monday the 12th of March, there's supposed to be another vote on the Brexit in the UK Parliament on Brexit. It may happen, it may not happen. If the Prime Minister doesn't think she's going to get it through, she'll cancel it. But guys, Brexit is going to happen at the end of this month. I think it's the 28th of March. Into April, the UK will po probably be out of Europe. The big thing is, will they be out with a deal or will they be out with a no deal or will they have asked for an extension? Nobody at this point knows what's going to happen, but something's going to happen this month, guys. So we are going to see movement on the pound this month. It may be positive, it may be negative, but keep an eye out for any developments on the pound. I'll talk about it over the weekend. Okay, guys, I hope this helps. Bye for now. Speak to you again later.